We'll turn the time over to the Crafty Lumberjacks. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we're really excited to be here from Michaels and, of course, Works Tools talking all about the Maker X. The coolest thing about the Maker X is that now it's available on Michaels.com. Yeah. Praise me. Now we're just going to wait a couple of minutes just before we really get into it, just so we can have everyone come in while we wait. If you want, you can tell us where you're from and because we always like to know a little more about you. Yes, of course. We also have Meg on the call here who is from Works Tools and she can answer and pop in whenever you have any questions about the tool specifically. Um, and of course, I'm going to be joining the chat as well. Yeah, so we're going to try to really answer as many questions as we have. And if you've been to one of our classes before, you know that we really like to keep it conversational. So if we're talking too fast, which when we talk about things we really like, we tend to do. So just to ask us to hold on, slow down, or repeat something, we're very happy to do that. Absolutely. If you're new to us, we are known as the Crafty Lumberjacks. I'm Dennis. I'm Andrew. And we live in Astoria, Queens, New York. We make all kinds of DIY projects throughout the year, uh, but now we're getting a kickstart on the holidays. It's never too soon to start planning ahead. And today we're going to be talking about the Maker X tool system. Yes, and we've been lucky enough to work with Works Tools for over a year now. And we've specifically worked with the Maker X system and have done over 30 projects using these tools. So it's- Yes, and we we're really never have, looking back. <laughs> that's true. So we really have a grasp of the tools just from a maker standpoint. And we do have Meg on the line. Um, to help us out with more logistical questions that maybe uh, we don't know specifically. So please ask those questions. This yes. is we have someone from Texas in here, Ooh, someone from Maryland. Welcome. I'm originally from Maryland, so I always yes. like to hear that. And I spent know. a lot of time in Texas. Yes, so yes. did I. We All spent right. that Halloween there, Lubbock, Texas. Remember? Yes, that? Lubbock, Texas. Shout out. Okay, now if you're new to the Make Maker X, you're probably wondering what is what it? Is it? Yeah. <laughs> the Maker X is a revolutionary tool system, perfect for makers, for crafters, for DIYers, for hobbyists, or people who just like to dabble in making things. Yeah, it really is a great gift. In the Maker X system, there are a handful of tools. And something that's really great about Works is they're always thinking of the next thing. So they have their line right now, but they are coming up with new tools that are going to continue to come out. So it really is exciting. Yeah, so today we're going to be focusing on the angle grinder, the rotary tool, the airbrush, which is one of our favorite, favorite tools in the system, yes. the heat gun, and the metal and wood crafter. Now the Maker X is a battery operated machine. I guess you can call it a, a machine. Tool system, a yeah. tool system, yes. And it all works from this little main hub, which yes. is perfect for us because we live in a one bedroom apartment in Queens, Astoria, New York. So we don't have much room and we're crafting everywhere in our space, wherever we can fit it. Yeah, so it's really great. So we can craft here in the living room or things that we need to craft outside that uh, you, know, you don't wanna do inside. It's easy, we can bring it out to the back it's really yeah. like- And actually so I'm holding here the first version of the Maker X. And like we said, they keep evolving. So mm -hmm. now the Maker X is even more portable because they've added a little clip. Which so is... you can put it in your belt loop or on your persons. Yes. And they also have a USB port. Um, because now, like we said, the tool system keeps growing. You can even plug in a light there yes, so that when you're light. working or working on a detailed project, or, you can use a light to see. Or I was going to say now that, you know, the sun is going down a little earlier, I feel like we're always like the latest crafters. Don't we're like, me. why are we starting this craft at four? Like, so yes. now we can work like at night in the dark. It, it really takes us great. a long time to wake up. We need a lot of coffee. <laughs> but now, so you're probably wondering, how does this work? And now what's so cool about the Maker X, like we said, it's battery operated. This is the battery that works with the main hub here. I'm going to come up a little closer so you can see. And uh, this is the 20 volt power share battery, which means not only does it work for the Maker X, it works for any tool system that comes with works tools In that the uses, power share yes, the line. power share line. So we use this battery for our drill. We use it, we have a hedge trimmer, a we leaf have blower. a leaf grower, even a snow, uh, snow blower. Yeah. Um, we use the same battery that we use for our Maker X. It's insane. Oh, we have a fan. We love oh, we have our fan. And, yes. our, and our mini um, vacuum. I mean, there are just so many things. They really think of everything. They make it so easy having, um, you know, the power share line. Yes. Um, 
I don't know if we should keep going on this camera, Maddie. I think or this, looks pretty, yeah, this looks pretty good. This looks pretty okay, good. so I'm gonna show you how this works. So like we said, this is the main hub and the power share battery slides into the main hub like that. And then you're ready to go. Uh, they have a handful of, uh, or not a handful, two buttons on it. So one is the on and off button that you just, to power any of your tools. And then they also have this little nozzle here, which is a minimum and a maximum speed setting. Yeah. For yeah, some of the tools, nozzle. yeah, you use that to kind of ramp up the speed. Yeah. So all the tools plug in to the little cord here. There we go. Let me see the angle grinder. All right, yeah, we're actually gonna start talking about the angle grinder today. Now, I'm sure some of you have heard of an angle grinder, or maybe some of you haven't. Uh, usually when I think of an angle grinder, I think of something really big and bulky and something that I wouldn't gravitate towards, but Works has made this really handy. And this is really great for detail work. Now the angle grinder is really great for sanding. It's really great for cutting things like tile, for yes. um, cutting small pieces of wood. We've even made a plant stand cutting pipe Metal uh -huh, that's right. I was going to say, um, in today's uh, class too, we're not just going to be talking about the tools. We're actually going to be demoing some of them. Yes. Uh, so you can stay tuned for that. Or if you have questions about any of the tools or anything we've went over so far, so far, so far. <laughs> please let us know. Um, but we're just going to kind of showcase, you know, the different tools and then kind of demo some of them. Yes. And Works has a really great website with different crafts that you can use for these tools. Um, and you can check that out. Meg, if you want, you can leave a link in the chat um, where people can kind of see those. Yes. So, and I was going to say, we actually did you tell them about the dreidel. I didn't tell him last, the last holiday season. We turned, you know, Michael sells all of those little craft wooden cubes. Yes. We, we turned a craft cube into a dreidel with our angle grinder. And the most shocking thing about it was that it, it worked. worked. The dreidel actually worked. And of course, our dreidel, we looked for it everywhere. It must be with our holiday I stuff. Know, pack away in storage. It was really easy to do. We just sanded down the bottom edges into a point. And we uh, used the rotary tool to uh, drill, drill a little hole. hole. And then we added a wooden dowel and we used the airbrush to uh, yes. add uh, uh, the, the detail. The yes. yes. Um, so what's really great too about this is you can actually use different, um, so we have a sand, what is this called? Yeah, like a sander. Like a sander. Yeah, a sander so that you can interchange these really easy with an Allen wrench. Yes, it comes with these accessories. And you know you can actually uh, purchase additional accessories that any any of them will fit with any type of angle grinder. Yeah, right? if you have the right size, which this is uh, two and three eighths inches, yeah, uh, you can use any um, any brands. Which Works has really great ones. We would recommend using the Works ones. But if you have some from an older tool, you can easily you can use, use those. Yes. Now it's really easy to swap out. We're not going to show you that just because we have so much to. Uh, tackle today, yes. but we are going to show you how it plugs in and what it sounds like so you can see it and hear it when we plug it in. Yeah, so all the tools, they have the three prongs in the back there for the cord to be plugged into. So really simple, you just line it up, match it up, and then plug in your main hub. There and then go. it's ready to go. You always want to hold on to the tool as you press power just because you don't want it you know, getting out of control or losing, you of know, course. yes. Uh, and of course, we always recommend using proper PPP. PPPE, PPPE, uh, yeah, yes, like, like gloves, goggles, goggles, depending on what material you're working. A mask, with. yeah, especially for something like this. This is a really powerful tool. So yes, you do, let's see it in okay. action here. All right, so I'm going to turn it on, and here we go. You should start so at minimum, minimum, and then setting. you can see. I'm not even halfway there yet. <laughs> yes. I think that's good. That's good. I'm good. Yes. I really wanted to, you know, create the, you know, the Suspense. dramatic. I'm feeling it on my toes. <laughs> um, but you can see how much force is in this yeah. little, little tiny tool here. It's astounding. Literally. It really it's, is. The first time we used it, we were so shocked at how much force and power it had because we were like, this isn't going to do anything. And, and then we were shocked. It does <laughs> a lot. So we love the angle grinder. If you have a project that you think you could use with the angle grinder, let us know in the comments because I'm always looking for like the next idea. We're always thinking of ideas to use with these tools and I'm always just like interested. So I actually saw someone use the works 
angle grinder to dig out a red brick. Oh, they yes. used it to dig out a red brick and then they planted like succulents in it. They made a yeah. little brick like succulent garden. It was that might be one of our projects for next year. It was impressive. It was really impressive. All right. So now we're going to move on to the metal and wood crafter. And actually, we're going to demo that and give you a little tip. Today, we're working with these wood cutting boards. Michaels, you know, they have all the blanks there. Um, we're going to be working with these wood cutting boards. They have these at your local Michaels. Yeah. Uh, perfect for, you know, weddings, gift giving, Christmas gifts, Thanksgiving yes. gifts, housewarming gifts. If you are, you know, if you have an Etsy store or something like that, you want to create yes. in bulk. These are so great. So great. So okay. we're going to move on to the wood crafter, the wood and metal crafter. Oh, this is not the right one. Here we go. All right. Here is the wood and metal crafter. And, you know, there are a lot of um, wood burning tools out there, but what really sets this one apart, I'm just going to move these really quickly. Sure, sure. Let's see. Yes, let's get a clean surface here so you can all see. All right. So what really sets this one apart is that you can decide the temperature you want digitally. So when you're working with different uh, woods, they have uh, different densities, so they burn at different rates. Now that's really great. It's really rare to see something be that specific. So as you can see here, there is a plus and a minus sign. And when I plug it in, you're gonna see it's gonna light up and it makes it so easy to decide what um, temperature you want. Now, yes. And what's so great too is that these, the wood in the middle crafter, they come with different accessories. Did you say do. this? You know, I hadn't gotten there yet. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I that's jumped okay. the gun. And we actually use these for wooden Easter eggs this season. Yeah, so we it comes use with um, a handful of stamps. Uh huh. It's also a soldering tool. So we've yes. made like a star garland with this. You can use this for stained glass art. Um, yep. And they have different stamps and stuff, which are really fun to use. Now, wood burning is an art form. It really is. Uh, it takes time to learn. We are not wood burning artists in the least, but yes. we have Although so we much are the fun. Crafty lumberjacks, <laughs> yes, so. <laughs> but we have so much fun learning. So what's really great too is they have different tips. I'm actually just going to put this one in. It's as easy as just twisting it right on. And of course, you just want to make sure that it's nice and tight. And of course, you also want to make sure that it's not on before you do this because this will get very, very hot. So of course, work with gloves if that makes you feel better, just so you can um, you know, be the, safe, the safest as you can. And it comes with this really nice uh, stand. So while you're working, you can rest it and everything is nice and safe. So I'm going to make sure that it's off before I plug it in. And I'm just going to line up the three prongs and then just plug it in. And then I'm going to turn it on by pressing the button. Now you don't have to worry about the dial with this one because the dial is actually on the tool itself. So there is an on button. Yeah, if you want to hold it a little closer. A little closer there we go. So I'm going to turn it on and you can see, there we go, it lights up. There we go. Actually, Maddie, will you just go to the other camera real quick? Let me just see if you can see it a little better. There we go. Nope. <laughs> Sorry, everyone you know, modern technology. Yeah, but so there's a little on and off button and then there's a plus sign and a minus sign. So you can raise the temperature or lower the temperature. Yes, and right now it's at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You can change it to Celsius very easily. We're gonna go all the way up. I mean, this goes, Meg, if you know how high this goes up, I cannot remember off the top of my head, but I was using this yesterday at 700 degrees. 500. 500. Well, maybe. Well, I was using it. Hey, he's got to get new glasses. <laughs> I've been telling is. him this for years. <laughs> That's actually true. I, I have some old glasses. 530 seconds, Meg just said. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. I'm sorry you can't see this, but this is already up at uh, 603. Oh my gosh. It's going Are really you? high. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, while we let this heat up. It really doesn't take a lot of time. I'm going to show you a really quick trick on how we transfer something to a wood block or to a cutting board. Yeah, so me. we've actually already started to wood burn this and then we're going to finish this. This we thought would be perfect for our Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, you know, Thanksgiving hang out gift. Or... Yeah, anything you can bring that's handmade really sets you apart. Now, drawing something like this uh, freehand can be really tricky. Now, we have a trick that you can uh, either use free clip art online, print it out, or you can sketch it on a piece of paper first, like I did over here. So over I just here. did- Meg said, sorry, heats up to 900 degrees. Oh my gosh. It really, it really gets hot. 
So I have a little sprig here that I drew freehand. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take on the back and I'm actually just going to scribble right on the back of it. I'm basically gonna make a carbon copy. Yep, and this is a great way to transfer any image, whether you're wood burning, yep. or we've done this a handful of times. Oh, we always use this projects. trick because it's much easier to sketch something out on paper than onto your actual material. You don't want to, you know, have erase marks and stuff like that. Right. So now that I have that done, I'm actually just going to trace right over it. And it'll magically appear. So you just want to do it nice and hard. There you go. And then, oops, you want me to, oh, that's okay. You can kind of see it right here, right over here. So it, it really just transfers right on there, which can really help. It's just nice to have a guide or something while you're going. When you're wood burning, you really don't have, sometimes the wood will control where you go. So it's easier to turn the wood itself than the actual tool. But now I'm going to show you how easy this yeah, is. I think you can put it on the table. You think so? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's hard to wood burn in midair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and we always recommend holding it like a pencil mm -hmm. and then just kind of going for it. You know, you can adjust your pressure how, um, you know, um, what should I say? Like if you're, if you're pressing down more firmly or kind of lighter right. on your grip, and you can see I chose this flat tip because I find it to be a really good beginner tip. And I'm just taking my tool and I'm just pushing it down and lifting up. And I think picking stuff that's nature related is always a great tip if you're a beginner because there's something organic about it. So if you mess up, it looks intentional and it doesn't look uh, like a mistake as much. So I love to pick things that are simple, but really, if you do them in repetition, if you um, if you mess up, you really won't notice. Yes, and that's what's so great about wood burning is it should always have this organic, natural feel. It yes. should almost kind of look handmade, Definitely. which is something that I like because it just makes me believe that it really came. Someone put in the time and the effort to make me something, oh, yeah. which is so special. I actually got a wood burn box from my friend Kevin for his wedding when he married Allie. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was and really it was sweet. the most special gift I've ever received. It was really nice. Really, your most special gift. Well, after, besides okay. anything Andrew has given me, of course, and the cat, say. and the cat. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, thank you. Belinda said that uh, you, you can make your own graphite paper with any and any pencil will work. Thank you, Belinda, for being um, active in the chat there. Yes, love that. Carl B said, that's awesome. Good idea for holidays as gifts. Yes, you know, and the holidays are going to be here before we know it. Yes. Now we- Because I can't believe it's already October, basically. I know, I really can't either. But there you can see- So pretty. I just did that pretty quickly. In seconds. In seconds. And look how gorgeous that looks. And that was really just me pushing down the wood burning tool in different um, areas to create this really beautiful- a little sprig. Yeah, so cute. I love a sprig. So that is the wood burning and the metal crafter tool. Yes. Really easy to use. Again, we always recommend using proper PPE. And also when you're wood burning to work in a well-ventilated area because it does get a little fumy and stinky. You're burning wood after all. Yeah. So open up your windows or take it outside. So now I'm going to just turn it off right here on the actual tool itself. And then I'm going to turn off the hub itself. Yes, so now we're going to move on to the rotary tool. And again, all of these tools are sold on michaels.com. They have different bundles and I'm pretty sure you can purchase them individually as well. Um, and like we said, all the tools work from the main hub here. And a lot of, we get a lot of questions about the battery length. Pretty much the batteries last for any time we've used it for any project yeah. where I'm kind of um, type A person where as soon as I use it, I go charge it right away. Right. Um, but we've never had an experience where we've been working with something and it runs out of that. And you know what's really great about these two, Meg, if I'm wrong, uh, correct me, but I believe these are lithium batteries, meaning you can leave them plugged in to your charger for as long as you need. And it's not going to, you know, diminish the battery life of the battery. So we always have a charging station in our place and we're just constantly like just charging rotating it and then batteries, yeah, rotating yes. batteries. Iris asked if we could bring the camera closer so we can see. Oh. Uh, we can try, I mean, I can bring the wood burn oh, uh, cutting board closer. It's always odd to navigate, but this was all done with the Maker X wood burning and metal craft tool. 
And Andrew just added this little sprig here. You know, I, so I think cute. I would fill it out a little more. Iris, if there was something else you wanted to see specifically, let us know and we can bring it closer. Yes, yeah, but it looks so, really great. It really does. Wow, go me. <laughs> go yeah, me, go me. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to move on to the rotary tool. Let now, us get it. This is. is the rotary tool might be my favorite tool other than the airbrush. Uh, because it's like 90 tools in one. So this rotary tool comes with, I believe, 40 different accessories, which is really great. Um, and as you can see here, it's nice and compact, but just like that angle grinder, it is super powerful. Here we go. Yes, really easy to change out the um, pieces and the accessories. We've used this for um, sanding down any fine work. We've also used this for polishing our resin projects. Oh, we actually just posted something where we um, etched glass, I'm sorry, engraved, engraved glass, glass. Yes, we made which uh, was so glasses. cool. Let me show you how easy it is. Sorry, let me fish for Take one of these. One. Take yes. a thin one. I'm going to show you how easy it is just to load this. So there's a little key that you would turn here that makes the opening smaller and uh, larger. So you just want to make sure that it's nice and large. And then there's also a lock button right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the lock button now that I have my um, grinder engraver in. And I'm just going to push it down and then turn this. Let's see. And also, I just want to say, uh, if anybody misses anything in today's class, this class will be posted on the Michael's YouTube channel in about 48 hours, sometimes even before then. Uh, so you can go revisit it if you need to. And of course, anytime you want to share something with us or with Michael's or with works, use the hashtag make it with Michael's so Definitely. that we can all see it. Yeah. And, and again, if you have any questions on something that we already talked about, just ask in the chat. We can go back very easily. Yes, and we're also very active on our Instagram, on our Twitter, yeah. uh, not Twitter, TikTok. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, we always love hearing from you, sharing your projects. We love to see them. So don't be a stranger. You can follow us at Crafty Lumberjacks across all social media. That's and of right. course, Works Tools is on all social media. Michaels, I'm sure you're already following them. Yes, and of course, Michaels has such great ideas and so does works tool on their website works tools oh, thank you website. maddie just shared our instagram thank oh, you thank you <laughs> so you just plug it in the same way you just line up the three prongs and then with this one you definitely want to make sure that you're holding it just like all the other tools i'm yeah, going to make sure sorry down so oh, thank you. now i'm going to make sure that the dial is set to minimum and then i'm going to turn it on by pressing the button and then i'm just going to raise the dial and you can hear it. And that again is only halfway through. You see how much force you can get out of this. I mean, that's pretty crazy. That is insane. We love <laughs> the rotary tool. We yeah, use we even use this time. as a drill every now and then because yep. they have a drill bit that fits right in. Um, so like we said, our dreidel that we made, we use a rotary yep. tool to drill a hole. Uh, it's it's really great. Yeah, and all these accessories are really just so versatile. They uh, There's a lot of makers who do things with doll houses and really teeny tiny crafts. This is so perfect for it because it really gets all that detail so well. I think this is such a great starter tool for any crafter who really wants to amp up their uh, their crafting. Absolutely. Their rotary tool is really a good starter tool. Yes, we're going to move on to the heat gun now. All right. Uh, let me see. We're, we kind of keep misplacing everything. <laughs> Dennis is the clean one, and I am more of, you know. The one where he, ma he makes the messes. That's true. We are the real life Bert and Ernie. <laughs> okay, so... Here is the heat gun. Really simple, compact, portable. They have the little stand there if you want to prop it up. The same thing. It's got the three prongs in the back here so you can plug in your main hub. And we're actually going to demo this as well. We use this for a handful of different projects. Um, we've used it in resin projects. We use it a lot to emboss. We don't know if there's any crafters out there who like to emboss. I kind of feel it's becoming a lost art form, but I love embossing. It's kind of like a glittery powder um, that you heat up and then it kind of locks in the, um, 
Yeah, it kind of turns, it almost like turns it into a plastic coating. Let us know in a comment if you've embossed before. I think it's one of those um, crafting techniques that's really interesting. Yes, and we're actually going to show you another wood burning technique without actually using the wood burning and metal crafter. You can actually use the heat gun. Um, they sell these scorcher markers at Michael's. Um, it's basically a marker that you heat up to then get a wood burning effect or look. It's really cool. Yeah. So as you can see, we just have a stencil and we are putting it down and then we're just going to trace over the stencil. Yeah, um, we got to give him his antlers. With the marker. And, and then we're just going to heat it up. And and I was going to say, I didn't know if you had said this, I was trying to fix the lighting a little bit, but the really great thing about this um, heat gun specifically is that it doesn't burn things quickly. There are heat guns right. out there that yes. we've used in the past where you use it on a material and actually burns the material instead of heats up the material. It's really great. A lot of scorch pen um, crafts, you can see the outline of, yes, like they burned it too much. Yeah, like they burned it too much. The wood is it burned. just got too hot too quickly. So what's really great Oops. is that um, that doesn't happen with with uh, works is um, yes, you have total control. Gun. Yes, I think what he means. That's exactly what I mean. And I wanted to say too. I know we're only talking about these five tools, but works is still evolving, and the Maker yeah. X is evolving. Now they have a blower. They available do a mini blower, which we actually just use for alcohol ink, yep. which was really cool. And it's really great to clean up surfaces. Yep. And then they have a, uh, a glue gun. Oh my gosh. I know we have that. And glue the glue gun. 20 seconds. Here is a sneak peek of the glue gun. This is so different from glue guns that are out there. You hold it like a pencil, so you have total control. And like Dennis said, it heats up in, I think, 20, 25 seconds, yes. which is a game changer. I know you are out there, crafters, when you need to use the glue gun, you want to do it quickly, and then you have to wait like three to four minutes for it to heat oh, up, and you keep checking Nobody it. got time for that. I know. It's really great. This is we're really excited about this one. This will be yes. coming out Yes, and then soon. they also have an FDA-approved airbrush. We're going to be using the Crafter airbrush in a little bit, but now they have one that you can use for food. You can use in the kitchen, yeah. and it's FDA-approved. Um, of course, you obviously have to use edible <laughs> edible uh, material. Yeah we, used, yeah, we used food coloring for it on a project recently, and that's really great, too, because Michael's, as you know, has a huge baking section. Yeah. It's always a section I avoid because I'm not really a, he's a, not baker. a baker, but now that we can airbrush, I mean, it's Really but, you know, he, he's level. not a baker, but he's a great cook. Yes, I think you're usually one or the other, you know? Yes, you either follow directions or you don't. I don't follow directions. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I follow my taste buds. All right, so here we go. I already did the uh, marker there. Let me just remove this tape. And again, this would be so great on like ornaments, like little, like Michael, they always have those little wood round slices. And actually we're gonna be doing a class with some wood rounds uh, in November. And our next class where we're gonna be making a project for Halloween using our Maker X will be on October oh my 7th. Gosh. I, I'm gonna bring that out before we end okay. the class. Yes, yeah, same thing here. So you take your heat gun, uh, you can see I'm gonna press on this one. You don't have to worry about the dial cause it just turns on and off. Yep. Um, and then you just turn it on. And we're going to start heating up where we uh, added the marker. And you can see how quickly it starts to change. OK, I'm going to try to go back and read some stuff. All right. OK, make sure the glue gun. So the glue gun's uh, available at works.com. And it's soon going to be available with Michaels, which is great. Um, and I see a comment. Oh, Meg said, best part is there's no having, there's like, you don't need an outlet for all this. Yeah. Yes. yes love no, that. no outlet. You can craft wherever you want. If you want to craft in the bathroom on the floor, you sometimes just kind of you have out. to craft on the bathroom on the floor, Dennis. Sometimes you That's just have That's why I usually have my breakdowns. <laughs> But if you're a content creator, we were just talking about this last night, you're always looking for that good lighting. You always want to make sure that, um, you know, you have like that perfect shot. That's why we love this. We'll take this outside. We'll get those shots for content. Everything looks great. So it's really so versatile. So, and now the longer I hold the heat gun over it, the darker it will get. You know, obviously I don't want to make you all sit here for the next five minutes staring at this. 
but you can see it already. I actually really like the two tone. I also, I was going to say, I didn't really shake up the marker either. <laughs> it looks great. It looks great. But as you can see, it really gives this wood burn effect and it smells. It smells like, it smells a, like a wood burn. Yeah, it's it smells great. delicious. We're getting closer to our, the log cabin of our dreams. <laughs> Um, we've also used this uh, for resin projects. You know, when you want to get air bubbles out of your resin projects, oh, we use yeah. this heat gun. Um, and we've actually even used this to dry paint. Like when we were in a rush, kind of wanting to dry paint, we yeah. would use this to dry acrylic paint. I, I feel like the, the heat gun is a tool that you might think, I don't really know if I would get a lot of use for it. And then you get it and then you use it for so many different yes. things. Yes. Oh, and actually one of our main hacks is that, oh, I don't yes. want to be like screaming over this. You're young. Well, I know, one of our main <laughs> hacks is that we actually use this heat gun to remove labels. Yes. Um, so even if it's on a jar, if it's on a piece of wood or something, this is an easy way to remove labels. You just set it, I wonder, I mean, this label might be fine too. Oh, you know, we've never done it on a piece of wood. Yes, you want to try it? Well, yeah, we can try it. But I guess so what happens is the heat loosens up the glue and, and then, then you can just remove the label. All right, this is so the first this, time. Yes, first time, so don't judge. Don't they say not to do this like online? I know, right? Never yes. do anything first time, come on. Oh my gosh, I mean, oh. wait, oh, am I blocking it? You're Hello. blocking it here, you want to get it? So it just loosens up the glue a little bit. Wait, you're blocking, you block the oh, whole no. thing. You block the whole thing. That's all right, that's all well, right. Well, you get it. But you can see there's really no residue now. It just Got loosened it, it up. There is a little marking, but that's just because of uh, when something's on there with wood, but. That that's so great. cute. This would make such a great gift. Add a little ribbon, festive bow, um, you know. You and could even add like an embossed card to it. It's yes. so cute. Okay, let's move on here. What is next? We did the heat gun. Airbrush. Okay, here comes the airbrush. This All is right. one of our favorite tools in the entire line of the Maker X. Maddie, if you want to go to the other camera, maybe we could talk about it a little first because I do, this was when we started working with Works and they talked about the Maker X system, we were like all on board and then they mentioned the airbrush and it was just something that we had never worked with before and we were so excited to try it. It's so unique and it really, like this is a tool that will take your crafts to the next level. It really just adds this polished professional look to it. It's, and it's just really fun to work with. Yes, so really cool. It comes uh, attached like that. This is kind of like the pump. And then faster, this, of yeah. course, is the uh, actual airbrush. Um, it just snaps on to the pump there. And then uh, it has different tools or I guess different pieces. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of will adjust your um, airflow and adjust your stream kind of depending on the look that you're going for. And of course they have the nozzle of uh, the paint reservoir, same deal, you plug it in and then you use this little lever to uh, you know, release the paint. Um, and we're going to give it a go right yeah. now. Now, I know the camera isn't great just because we're on Zoom and such, but uh, this is the teeniest, tiniest nozzle. And that's what's really great about airbrushes in general is that you're getting, you're having such a, a light flow of paint come out that you get this really awesome airbrushed effect. It almost looks like a spray painted effect, but it's a lot easier to control. And you can cover things <laughs> like, actually, I'm going to show this one. We did this one earlier. This is a cutting board, which says recipe. And we just used a stencil. We're going to show you that now. But um, it's really, it's just this light coat of paint. So you get these really nice crisp lines. Yes, which hopefully hopefully we'll get on this one too because we did this a little earlier. Yes. Um, someone asked about what brand of stencil paper did you use? That was a stencil that we purchased at Michael's. Michael's like they have a, a wide ago. variety of different yeah. stencils. Um, but we actually, for this one that we're going to use with our airbrush, this is one that we cut out with our Cricut, just mm -hmm. on regular stencil paper. Um, not re regular stencil paper. Oh, so it's like it's an like adhesive. Cricut stencil. Yeah, Cricut stencil. And you do want to make sure that before you start, um, that you really press down those edges, whether you are working with a regular stencil or an adhesive stencil. If you're actually working with a stencil that doesn't have adhesive on it, what we recommend is to buy um, an adhesive spray that you can get at Michael's and spray the back of that stencil really lightly, and then you can press it right down. And that's going to get all those edges um, nice and clean. Nice and clean. But if you actually, we were kind of talking about different ways to get really crisp lines with stenciling. If you have any tips, let us know in a comment because we're always looking. We've heard of Mod Podge tricks and stuff like that, but we're always yes. curious. 
Yes. Yes. Um, so now you do need um, airbrush paint for yeah. the airbrush. Uh, you don't need a lot though, which no. is so great. Uh, I'm gonna give it a shake and we're gonna show you how it works and then also how to switch out the color. Whenever you're working with multiple colors with your airbrush, we recommend working from lightest to so darkest. Nice. Yes, and actually you can make your own airbrush paint by taking acrylic paint and watering it down with distilled water. It is finicky and tricky. So if you do that, maybe look for a specific ratio um, online if someone else has done it, but because you do really want to make sure that it's thin enough to travel through the, the tip. Yes. Okay, I'm pressing it down. Sorry. Okay, yeah. So here we go. I'm going to load my airbrush. So same thing. It has the three little holes in the back, three holes here. You match it up and you no. marry the two. For this, do you want me to take the phone and hold it? Uh, sure, think? sure. Because I want to make sure everyone sees this, you know? I so, know. Maddie, I'm Our just little going stencil, to... though, isn't really on. But... Oh, okay. Well, we can make sure we get it on. Yeah. Oh, are you coming back here? I'm going to come back here. Wow, we're getting fancy here. We are. There we go. It so doesn't really, look as nice. It right? doesn't. All right. So That's should right. I switch back? No. I, okay. <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> okay. So yes, yeah, so you do want to make sure that you press your creases well, just so you get like the best. Right. Because I'm going to do like a, a test piece first and yeah, then all of totally. that. So yeah, this pops right off the cover of the airbrush here, just pops right off. Yeah. Like so. And then you want to load the paint reservoir about a third yeah a done. third we don't use a lot we use very little and you can kind of see you'll be surprised on how much paint this actually uses it's very little is that good i can't see uh, i'll do it yeah that looks pretty good and then you want to close up the paint reservoir again it just pops right on you don't have to twist it or anything like that that is airbrush paint yes yes this is airbrush paint let me get a piece of paper so we always recommend before uh, you know doing your airbrushing on your project to practice it on a piece of paper first, yep. just so that you can adjust the setting, make sure everything's working okay, um, you know, and then kind of go for it. So same thing you do, you press the on button here on the Maker X, and you could hear it turn on. You don't have to worry about the nozzle because it just kind of. Yep. <gasps> okay, so oh. here you go. So then you just kind of click the. Uh, Sorry, I'm like blanking on any type of terms here. It's just things now. Yeah, on like on the yeah, 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 the presser. Yeah, the toggle. So there you go, Thank the you toggle. Man. And, and then it starts working. That. Yes, how cool. Oh my gosh. And for the project we're doing in October, we're going to be using the airbrush and it is awesome. Yes, it right? has such a great effect. And then again, like I said, if you turn these, you can get a narrower spray. Uh, oh yeah, yes. Yeah, so that? you see it's like a little narrower. Is that a word? Narrow word? Narrow word. Okay, yes. Or you can open it up a little bit and you'll get a wider spray. So having a scrap piece of paper is really essential before you start weeping. Yeah, so I'm just going to kind of go for it. Maybe I'll do like a little ombre thing here. Okay. And you want to hold it about um, six to eight inches away. You can kind of see it going right on there. Yeah. And we like to work in like a swirling motion. You see I'm just kind of circling it around, circling it around. And you really don't need a lot. I mean, of course, if you want a darker look, you can go over it a handful of times. But as you can see, it covers really, really well and very quickly. And this is great. I need a raise. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> um, and this is actually one that was in a Cricut design space. So it was all there for us. We didn't have to design or anything. Kind of like our dear stencil. It was already there. Yes. Alana, you're welcome. So yes, this is airbrush paint you can get at Michael's or you can make your own by uh, watering down acrylic paint and uh, yeah, you water. Yeah, you see it has to be a very thin it really paint, does. you know. Food coloring worked really well. We just did these cupcakes. It was really impressive. I was so surprised. I guess we should have picked a color that looks more like uh, kitchen bready, but I guess. I think it depends on your kitchen. That's true, that's true. And that's really the great thing about all of these tools. You can really customize everything you do. Even if you're making things in bulk, you really can customize whatever you're making. Oh, that's a moldy bread. That is moldy bread. I thought We're I would get speaking a laugh of, from Well, I know we Sorry. had a uh, moldy bread very recently. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to change out the colors. You can just kind of uh, dump this out and switch. Let me see how much is in here. Yeah, I think it's always a good thing to just check. 
it's almost on empty. Okay. So what we like to do is when we're working with multiple colors, um, if you have a lot of paint left over, just dump it out in the sink. Yeah. You know, you can rinse this out with water. We also recommend getting an airbrush cleaner um, just because it will really help, you know, protect the longevity of your airbrush. Um, that is something you really want to do when you're working with your airbrushes. Take the time to clean it. It's really going to help you have the best results every time you use it. So you, by running uh, distilled water through it, by getting a cleaner for it, and just making sure that there's no paint left over. Yes. So, and a good tip, sorry, if you're doing multiple colors is start with the lighter color and then go to the darker color, just like we're doing. Yeah, see, I said that already, but he doesn't listen to me. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm kidding. trying to read I know, it's and... all right, I'm just teasing you. So and now what I will do uh, is I just let the color run out until the new color starts to show um, on my scrap piece of paper here. Hopefully uh, we'll get to it soon. So we're using a, a blue. Yes, yeah, so a blue. Oh, you can kind of see yeah. it starting to come through. So it's almost as if the green was never there. So you can work with multiple colors. Again, work light to dark, let it run out, and then you'll have your new color. You know what we did last year, which was really beautiful? We made a faux wreath using Michael's yes. um, greenery, and then we gave it this frosted look with the airbrush. It was stunning. It was really beautiful. Frosted window panes. Wow. So we were obsessed with the airbrush. We try to use this. <laughs> in all our crafting, in all our painting, uh, just because it's a lot of fun. Oh, Meg just shared our Galaxy Pumpkin. Our oh, our yes. Galaxy pumpkin. Meg, that's one of our favorites. Actually, I think that was our first project with the airbrush. Oh, I love that pumpkin. You can see there's some bubbling in our stencil here, so we're definitely not going to get a total clean look. You know, and that really is because you can see the bubbling. We just put it on. I was going to say, we put it on before the class if you're working with a stencil and wood you want to make sure you put the stencil on right before you use it just so it uh doesn't have a chance to bubble we uh we should have done like a halloween thing well no this is supposed to be a kickoff for christmas that's so right I guess. I was, I we chose, should have picked different colors i'm sorry i chose these colors you know this is perfect for a witch's kitchen Yes, we will be doing Halloween next week, Meg says. Yes, and we're so, going to show you, give you a sneak peek of the project we're going to be making. Do you think that's good? I think that looks great. So again, you see if you get closer, it goes a little darker, you know, you kind of get to vibe it and kind of see where it's going, what you're doing, what they're doing. And designers, you make it work. That's right. OK, I think I'm out of paint. All right, that looks very really beautiful. beautiful. So easy. Thank you, Maddie. Just shared our class for next week. Join us. It's really one of our favorite projects we've yes. ever made. I'm going to just go dump this out in the sink. Okay. And I'm going to start peeling this off. What do you oh, think I'm going to miss the big reveal. Well, it, I probably won't get too far considering I'm just holding it with one hand. But as you can see, now there is, there's always uh, different opinions on this. Do you pull the stencil off while the paint is dry or when the paint is wet? Uh, and we just got asked, can you reuse the stencil? You know, for this for the stencil we're using right now, it's a Cricut stencil. You cannot reuse it. It doesn't really reuse well, but the stencil we use for the deer is a reusable stencil and we've used that stencil multiple times. So you didn't miss anything. Okay, yes. Let's see, I really... Can you spray water through to clean it out? Absolutely. I would just make sure it's filtered or distilled water just so um, there's no uh, you know, leftover compounds. Yeah. We actually kind of take out the pieces when we're cleaning our airbrush. We have an airbrush cleaner and we'll take apart like our pieces, take off the nozzle and just let them soak in our cleaner for a little bit. Um, and it does really well. Yeah, I think a good tip is to really just make sure you hold on to all those pieces. We usually have, we put them in a little ramekin just so they don't- Yeah, they don't get disappear. lost or yeah. anything, you know. Let's see, let's see. Yeah. If there are any questions, this is a good time to ask. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. This is exceeding my expectations here. Very now, beautiful. I was going to say we've done similar things like this in the past. We did this. The, uh, oh, it's it's in that uh, cricket joy drawer. Okay. Um, we've done. We did a stencil last year. It was a vintage style Christmas tree box, and what we did was we um, stenciled everything on, and then we took our rotary tool and distressed it a little bit with the sander it looked it looks so good i cannot wait to pull that yes out it looks like a little vintage christmas it, i mean it was really so cute the paint is still a little wet okay so 
but I just you want to make sure, it. yeah. You just want to make sure you don't get it on the cutting board. The cutting board. But as you can see, I mean, look at these lines. Maddie, so you want this for Christmas? Beautiful. <laughs> yes, Maddie. <laughs> I'm just gonna pop these off. So if there are any questions out there, we are um, not able to look at the screen, but Meg, if you see any, you can chime in if you want. And I mean, this took no time. We've done almost four projects and kind of talked our faces off for the last really 40 did. minutes. I have to say, sorry, not to interrupt, but like the color choice was a little odd, but look at this, how beautiful that blending is. That looks really This nice. would look really beautiful at a beach house or- Sherry. Know, Sherry. We'll give it to our friend Sherry. Yes. How is this one over here? Okay. But the detail is really great. Gosh, that looks right. It's gorgeous. I mean, come on. It looks a little uh, blurry on camera, but it... the gradient is so pretty. Oh, thank you. Great job. And as you can see, it was really easy to create that effect. It really, it doesn't take a lot of skill. Sorry, Dennis, but it really doesn't. All he did was brush it over and then go back over it with the other color. And it, I mean, it looks like we've been using the airbrush for decades. Gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, uh, Maddie, if you want, you can flip over the camera. Yes, let's gather all our projects. Hi. Talk a little more about the yes. tools. All right. Hello. Actually, I'm just gonna put this one right here, Maddie. All right, so again, the wood and metal crafter, here's what we did with the wood burner. And here is what we did. Well, these two we did with the airbrush. The airbrush. How beautiful. This one you see we did really, really dark. Yeah. That looks really pretty with the black. It really does. It really, and, and if you feel it, it's really great. Cause you know, when you work with acrylic paint and you do something and then it's almost, um, it's almost raised a little bit because the paint is so thick. You don't get that with the airbrush. It's really just as level as the wood. So when you cure it, it would really cure good. really well. Should I go get the craft that we're doing next week real quick? Just yes, so get the craft so we can show that. It's just right over here. And again, so they have the five tools already on, on michaels.com. I forgot, Meg, maybe you can remind us if they have the, what I think you, they have the mini blower currently. Um, they also have beyond just the Maker X tools. They have, uh, I think the drill on michaels.com okay. and a handful of other tools. Here is what we're making next week. Now oh, he lost his eye. I know, well, we were kind of working with it and I pulled out the eye. Not next week, October 7th. Oh my gosh, October 7th. That's not next week? I mean, it could basically. be. Um, this is this airbrush. It's actually a planter. You can add a plant in there. But what you can't see right now is just all the color that's on it. It's really quite beautiful. Oh, there you go. Yep, Look at these colors. All done with the airbrush. All done with the airbrush. It's really gorgeous. This is such a fun, whimsical craft, all made from a plastic skull. So easy to do. Yes. I'm just going to show off the little glue gun for a little bit. This is what it looks like. Um, really simple to use. And then they have the little trigger here. Um, it has a very fine point and tip. So it's great for like detailed work or um, up close work. Again, works with the Maker X system, the hub. It keeps growing. They have more tools. We actually even know they're creating more beyond what they've already created. Yes. That's, we, we have an in with them. So when we're, when we're working on crafts specifically for work tools, I'm just gonna give a little behind the scenes too. We always try to think of crafts that use multiple, um, multiple tools in the system. So what's really great about this system is if you're working on one project, you can easily swap out the tools while you're working. Yes. And with, what's so great about the glue gun is, again, it heats up in 20, 25 seconds. Yes. Which, so if you're swapping your tools, it really you don't have that wait time that you usually have. So same thing, Maker X has the button on the hub here, but then you have a power button on the glue gun. So, and it turns from red to green in no time. We'll see a change in just a bit. And then, you know, it's there ready it to go. You squeeze the handle here like so. I guess I can do it on the box. And again, it's that fine precision tip so you can get up really close, nice and easy breezy kind of, can you see it? I don't know. Oh gosh. Well, but yeah, you get it. 
Right. You, can, yeah. you know how a glue gun works. And I, <laughs> yeah. will say, I will say something I really do appreciate with works tools. They really do try to make everything as easy to understand as possible. Just having that green light. So, you know, I, I, I just feel like I'm stuck on this glue gun thing, but there's so many times where I'm waiting on a glue gun. And I'm like, it's been do I know if it's hot or not? Like, do I right. have to you touch the knob and be like, test? this isn't working? Yeah, so they really do make everything, all of these tools really easy to understand and use. Which... Yes, they also have, I'm sure there's stuff on Michael's too, but Works has their own little blog where they share a lot of our projects yeah. and a they, lot of Meg other mentors. Oh, a lot great. Of our stuff during. Yeah, so if you ever need inspiration or you're kind of wondering what can be your next craft or if you're looking for gifts, yes. um, you know, it's all right there. It's all right there. Now, if you have any questions, that was a really great time. If oh, we... someone asked, how do you load the glue? Oh, yeah. Yes, and you don't need an outlet. Yes, Meg, I love that. You don't. You don't. You don't. Um, there's a little hole in the back here. So you just load it. Load, so load yeah, it like you see it go gun. down and same thing like a regular glue gun. I'm yeah. like looking at this, but that's the I know. Um, Yeah, and then once it's ready to go, you just pop, pop it in. It goes just like a regular glue gun, you yes. know? And that works with uh, any of like the fine glue sticks you can get one at Michael's, which is really great. Yes. Uh, we had so much fun today. Any other questions, please let us know. We're about to sign out. We're almost at our time. Yes. Again, uh, this video will be shared on the YouTube uh, page, uh, Michael's. In just a couple of days. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask us, or you can write works tools specifically on Instagram. Um, yes, I do want to say too, I think the Maker X is such a little charming uh, tool system that we crafters haven't seen yet. And I think it is the perfect gift. We have a niece and nephew who love to craft yeah. because they like to take after their uncles. Um, and they are obsessed with these things. Yeah, and, and they're just at that age where they can, you know, handle tools like this. Yes. You know? So it's it's exciting. 10. 10. They yeah. got so big I so know. quickly. But um, <laughs> uh, what's so cool too, it's like kind of those gifts that you can kind of keep adding to. So it's almost like if you get your kids like a gaming system it's right. like they want the new games they want yeah. the new controller it's almost kind of the similar thing with maker x that it's like hey you got these tools this time but guess what next, next time year. you get a glue gun you get a blower you, yes. you know um which is i think so fun and it makes it easier so you don't have to rack your brain for what to get the kids every freaking time you know <laughs> <laughs> uh but yes i we i do think this is such a great uh just such a great gift for yourself or for somebody that you love. I mean, it really is just yes. ever -growing. And not just like uh, Etsy creators, like hobbyists. Yeah. I think this is such a neat little gadget. I mean, we were so lucky when works came into our life and we got to try these out actually before they were even on the market. Yeah. And we were like, oh, this is oh going to be God. big. This oh. is going to be big. Um, Because it's just so special and so unique. Uh, see, but thank you questions? all so much. I think that's it. Yes, y'all agree. Continue these classes. Yes. Oh, Maddie, thank, thank you, you Meg. Anna. Thank you. Everybody have a safe and happy holiday season. We hope to see you back October 7th to make the skull planter and have a great week. Bye, everyone.